Yeah. It isn't just our politicians that are dip, dipped out of that stream. We get our captains of industry. We get our chiefs of police, our individual cops, judges, juries, teachers, professors, other professionals. If you believe our politicians are corrupt, they are merely a reflection of a corrupt society and an anemic church. Which brings me to the last point. America doesn't have a financial or legal problem. Our financial problems are a symptom. Lack of moral fiber is a disease. America has lost her moral compass. Bernie Madoff, I know some of you have to remember, it hasn't been that long ago that he did investors out of millions of dollars. Bernie Madoff had a moral problem long before he had a legal problem. A moral man wouldn't have built his investors and in some cases his friends out of millions of dollars. There is hope. Last November, a homeless man, Dave Talley, found a backpack in Tempe, Arizona. That backpack contained $3,300 in cash and a laptop computer. I don't know if you all remember seeing this. Good news doesn't get much press. But he, he was a recovering drug addict and he was homeless. And he said the temptation to keep the money was almost overwhelming. I can imagine. But he said his conscience wouldn't allow it. The money wasn't his to keep, even though his bicycle was broke. You know, I found in my business life it was as important to listen for people, what people don't say, than it is to listen to what they do say. Sometimes what they don't say is more telling. But you have to listen carefully for it. David Talley didn't say that he was afraid of being caught. He didn't say he turned it in because it was against the law to keep it. He said it was a matter of conscience. He understood it was a moral issue, not a legal one. The liberal left will often excuse thieves because they were poor. Well, if wealth makes you honest, how do you explain Bernie Madoff? And if poverty makes you dishonest, how do you explain Dave Talley? Fact is, people don't steal because they don't have stuff. They steal because they don't have morals. Right. For more than a generation, atheists and their fellow travelers in the church uh, and the ACLU have been working diligently to purge God from the public square. They are convinced, and they have convinced the electorate, that the separation of church and state is written in the U.S. Constitution. It is not. People will often refer to the Establishment Clause in the First Amendment. When was the last time you heard anybody refer to the Prohibition Clause? Well, the First Amendment says, literally, word for word, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, comma, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Right, exactly. They all like to talk about the Establishment Clause, the first part, but you very rarely hear anybody even talk about mm -hmm. the Prohibition Clause. So, it's... That last clause is commonly ignored. Uh, people are really... I find a lot of people are surprised to learn that separation of church and state is not really in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. It was lifted from a letter written by Thomas Jefferson as an individual to another individual. Even Jefferson would have been surprised that his letter would be used to drive the Christian faith out of all of our institutions from the 4-H to our schools. In his time, the U.S. Capitol was the largest church in Washington, D.C. The U.S. House chambers were used as church for the first 70 years of the Republic. The separation of church and state doctrine left the law school and made its way to the school of business. Students were taught that corporations were not moral entities. They're merely paper constructs designed to turn a profit and protect assets. 
my wife and I were talking to a member of our church congregation one Sunday after church, and he had been doing business with another member of the same church, and he got beat down so far on the prices he said he couldn't make a living. He had to, he had to leave, and he, before quitting business, he reminded him that they were both of the same faith. They both went to the same church, and what he was doing he didn't think was the moral thing to do. And the response was, well, that, that's church, and this is business. So it's the separation of church and state which morphed into the separation of church and business has now become the separation of church and society. Right. Conventional wisdom says we're supposed to visit God in His house on Saturday or Sunday, but He's not supposed to spend any time in polite society. He's not legally permitted to accompany us to uh, work or school or government. Political correctness has placed Him on house arrest. Yeah. I don't think God's going to wear that ankle bracelet <laughs> that's been installed by the American judiciary. It's time for some of these jurists to study American history and read the prohibition clause in the First Amendment. Unfortunately, making us subject only to man's law has created a moral deficit that parallels our financial deficit. God was with us at the beginning. In the very first paragraph of the Declaration of Independence, Jefferson refers to the laws of nature and nature's God. He goes on to recognize that we were endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights. The Declaration then closes with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. Driving God out of the public square has enabled the political and religious left to change moral questions into social issues. There's nothing social about abortion. It's a moral question. There's nothing social about the decision to defend traditional marriage. Right. Changing the debate from moral grounds to the legal arena has lowered the bar. Mm -hmm. Man's standards are infinitely inferior to God's standards. That's right. Yeah. Now, I'm not asking you all to turn into a bunch of self-righteous, holier-than-thou. <laughs> I mean, those kind of Christians kept me away from the church for a long time. Yeah. So I said at the outset, I'm a tolerant guy. I put up with a lot of things I don't approve of, and I certainly don't promote. What I am asking is that you develop some intolerance towards intolerance of Christianity. Right. I don't know if you can believe this, but a Minnesota state legislator recently said that hearing Jesus Christ on the floor of the state house made her uncomfortable. <laughs> well, it's time for people of other faiths or no faith to show some real tolerance. They need to learn to tolerate Christians and Christianity. In our republic, in our republic, church and state are indeed separate, but they can't be separated. Self-government depends on government of the self. Right. Our Constitution was designed, as Adam said, only for a moral and religious people. America cannot solve her financial and social problems in a moral vacuum. Christianity is our nation's primary faith, and it provides that moral context. God has indeed blessed America. It's up to us whether that blessing continues. God bless you all. I thank you for what you do, and I thank you for being here today.